Hello. Today, we will be talking about the chemical reactions. Chemical reaction is a process in which one or more reacting substances are converted to or use one or more different products. Here are the different types of reactions. Chemical reactions may either occur spontaneously at either slow or fast rates depending on the variables involved. For instance, under thermodynamically favorable conditions, the reaction between baking soda and vinegar happens instantly along with the release of energy via bubble formation. The slower rate reaction, on the other hand, can be observed on rusting of iron and naturally occurring green patina on metal. There are three primary factors that affect the rate of specific chemical reaction. These are the concentration of the reactant, temperature, and catalysts. As the reactant concentration increases, the reaction rate also increases, considering that a higher concentration will trigger more reactant molecules to collide within a certain period. As the temperature increases, the rate of reaction also increases. Higher temperature will give rise to the average kinetic energy of the reactants. Hence, a more significant proportion of reactant molecules will be having a minimum amount of energy. Catalyst is any substance that increases the rate of reaction without being consumed in the process. A great example of a catalyst is enzyme, which are naturally occurring catalysts utilized in various biochemical reactions. As seen in this figure, catalysts lower the activation energy needed for a reaction to occur. Since catalysts are not consumed in the process, it does not affect the reaction's equilibrium state. Therefore, catalysts do not appear in the overall stoichiometry of the reaction. Furthermore, catalysts only lower the activation energy and do not affect the net change in energy that results from the reaction. In a reaction, the reactant that is consumed first is called the limiting reagent, which limits the amount of the yielded product of the reaction. It is like having 5 hot dogs and 4 buns. Due to the 1 is to 1 ratio, we can only have 4 complete hot dogs in a bun. For this example, the bun is the limiting reagent whereas the hot dogs are the excess ones. Determining the value of the limiting reagent is necessary for the computation of the theoretical yield. One approach to calculate this is by looking at the number of moles of each given reactant using these steps. To further understand the concept, here is a sample problem. Our first step is to check if the given equation is balanced. Since it is balanced already, we can now proceed with the second step. In the given problem, we are given with the masses of aluminum and chlorine. We have to convert these mass values to moles using the molar masses of the said reactants, giving us these computations. We will use these mole values to calculate the molar ratio. Now that we have the molar ratio, we can now interpret the values using this. Since the computed actual ratio is greater than the required ratio, chlorine is the reaction's limiting reagent. Our final step is to determine the theoretical yield of aluminum chloride in the reaction. Remember that the theoretical yield is the amount of product that is produced when the limiting reagent is fully consumed. In this case, the limiting reactant is chlorine, so the maximum amount of aluminum chloride that can be formed is. Since a theoretical yield is typically reported with units of mass, let's use the molar mass of aluminum chloride to convert from its moles to grams. Finally, our calculations show that the theoretical yield of the reaction is equal to 5.20 grams of aluminum chloride. In all experimental reactions, the yielded product would not always be 100% equal to the expected theoretical value. Factors such as human errors and incomplete reactions cause these discrepancies. Thus, to know how successful the experiment is, we need to calculate the percent yield of the reaction using this formula. To further understand the concept of percent yield, here is a sample problem. Since the theoretical yield and actual yield are given, we can just substitute the variables in the formula with the appropriate values and compute for the percent yield, giving us this. As said in the calculated value, the percent yield of the reaction is not 100%. This is normal as several factors might have caused the insignificant decrease in the yield. That is all for today. Stay safe.